Your neighbor tells you about the unstable man in the cul-de-sac who claims to have been abducted by aliens. And then there's the woman in town who claims to see Bigfoot all the time. Your boss, who you greatly admire, confides in you that he has started speaking with his wife daily when he gets home from work. She died eight years ago. It's hard to believe this stuff, and you write these stories off as overactive imaginations. Are these people seeking attention, or are they a bit unstable? No matter what you think, if you're like me, you walk away wondering, what if that was true? The What If It's True podcast features stories by ordinary people like you and me. Something has happened to them, something so strange they are in agony unless they tell others. My name is Cameron Buckner, and the What If It's True podcast is available at whatifitstruepodcast.com and on all available podcast apps. porch it's great to see you again it's good to be seen how you doing uh, i'm doing well what you been up to uh well working that's yeah it. that's about it working trying not to sweat Ooh, i tell you it's it's been a heat wave around here yes and, and thunderstorms yeah windy thunderstorms yeah but i don't know yeah i don't know if i told you but i had a 24 foot section of that privacy fence get snapped off yeah yeah i saw a lot of that it was almost like microbursts come through but it's straight line winds but those wooden fences they didn't make it in a lot of spots for sure uh-huh. Well, we want to welcome everyone to the podcast tonight, whether if you're watching us live or if you're watching us later. And we just want everybody to know how much we appreciate them. And Larry, I love Bigfoot encounter stories. And so I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, yeah. It's sort of in our neck of the woods it's close that's for sure yeah but uh why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest all right our guest tonight is mr roger williams and he's going to talk to us about his encounter he may talk to y'all about a conference over in east tennessee too i don't know (laughs) he can't hear us did you mute him again no he was fine earlier. Yeah. He must have run his band without talking to us earlier. What do you think? Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, let 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 log, me admit. log out and log back in. They can't hear us. Anyway, Mark was in Alabama what two weeks ago Uh uh-huh and he called me and asked me if i wanted to help host while he was down there i said man with the people you got there there ain't no need for me to be (laughs) on there i'd just be sitting there like a knot on log with all them stories going around so i bowed out of that week and it was great 
Whenever you got Misty and Greg and Kumbo, <laughs> you don't need nobody else. There we go. Can you Isn't hear me? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. It just stopped all of a sudden. <laughs> it's the government trying to yep. suppress your eyewitness account. <laughs> I don't know what y'all said to cause that, but you know. <laughs> my, my wife's watching on TV in the other room. She said, he said log out, log back in. I'm like, got it. <laughs> I don't know what happens, but sometimes that works. I yeah. probably <laughs> Roger, why don't you just introduce yourself to our audience tonight? Oh, okay. Uh, of course, Roger Williams, um, 52 years old from um, from southern middle Tennessee. I'm, we're about 20 miles from the Alabama line. Um, you know, grew up in this county. Uh, I've lived in this county all my life. You know, just like a lot of people I know, hunted, fish, started hunting when I was eight. My dad started taking me with a BB gun teaching me safety and all that. We, I grew up, uh, you know, camping at night, uh, trot lining on the duck river, uh, fishing in ponds, you know, just the whole thing. <clears throat> and we had a, we had a country store in the late seventies for about three years. And then <clears throat> they sold it and bought a store on the interstate on I-65. So we we're on uh, exit 32 there for 28 years. And that's that's what I did. Got to meet people from all over the all over the world, actually. Uh, different accents, different cultures. You know, I would all talk about food, you know, kind of things they did back home. And um, just always been interested in uh, other things. But this is this is home. You know, if we go to Wyoming or Colorado and and travel, I love it. I love seeing different places. But when I get home, I'm you know, this is this is my spot. So yeah. it's, you know, the, you know, raising my kids, I, I kind of got out of the hunting mode for a while. Um, but always, always loved it. And then <laughs> we started back about four years ago. Uh, my son and I on our first scouting trip had something crazy happen to us and it ignited this, you know, all over again. Um, it just wasn't looking for anything. And it just happened. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm kind of a, kind of one of those people. I'm a homebody that likes to get out and ramble sometimes, I guess. Whether right. it's woods, I mean, like woods I've never been to. It's just, yeah. that's my, you know, that's therapy. You know, looking looking at the trees and, and, the, and the layout of the land and all. So, <clears throat> just simple. Grew up, you know, um, working with my family and um, nothing too exciting. But uh, until here, until you got the video here. <laughs> what type of hunting did you and your son take out <clears throat> four years ago? So um, we were, we were, he got a new place to hunt. Um, and it's private land and uh, it's pretty rural. And we were going to uh, whitetail hunting. <clears throat> and I realized, even though I had the luxury of learning from my dad, um, there was things that I hadn't got to teach him. So he knew a lot of stuff, but there's, there's no, uh, um, there's no substitute for actually being outside and, and somebody pointing out things that, that it's easier to learn, I guess. Right. And he, um, he's very good. He, he's, he's really attentive, uh, really smart about animals. And he knows a lot more than I do about the animals and their habits and, sounds they make and all that so it, it's, it was a pleasure but um yeah we i don't know if you want me to tell that yet what we had happened to us it no was, don't tell it yet all right but, but oh. up a little more. <laughs> first tell us about what happened to you 35 years ago all right um so I lived or we lived, there were a few houses, but there were no kids my age. There were no kids, actually. It was all older people. And there, you know, it was maybe a quarter of a mile to one house, one kind of close by, you know, just scattered out. <clears throat> I had the run of the couple farms there. I was lucky. 
uh, the, the farmers and the landowners, uh, they liked me and my dad and just t- said, hey, anytime you want to go, we have one acre right there in the middle all of it. And anytime you want to go hunting, you're welcome to go. And I took advantage of it. <clears throat> when I couldn't go hunting, you know, I hated staying inside at that point. And when I couldn't go hunting, I was outside, always looking at the hills and the, the woods and just there's all the usual small game around you know well one day i i don't know what i was doing i was probably home by myself it was in the fall i remember the leaves were off the trees and i just did something i did hundreds of times i would step across the little there was a drive that went up to a cemetery behind our house i would step across out of our driveway across that drive into a open field and it was green uh up and it was short uh, grass up to a point when it started up the hill, they didn't bush hog that <clears throat> every now and then, but, and it had regrowth, you know, from the year before and it would get intertwined and it was really hard to walk up that hill. Well, I stepped out one day and just the normal thing looked up, the, looked up the fence row where there was a dry Creek bottom on the other side. <clears throat> looked up through there and make sure nothing you know deer you know was was hiding in there um scanned up to the top of the hill the old uh wagon road that was a little section there and then just nothing was out there and i was about ready to go back to, uh, in the backyard and just, just all of a sudden uh about 180 200 yard mark there was a there was a bend <clears throat> that came out in the field like a little elbow and it went back and I had my hunting. Uh, I had two places I hunted that back corner of that field, which I was hid from everybody. It was a, a dirt mound that had been pushed up and I could put a seat in there, hide behind all the briars and stuff. It was perfect. And, but in between there, there was this little point <clears throat> and something stepped out. Just, it stepped out as all one color and I'm, I don't know, you know, like everybody says, you don't know what to think. The first thing I read, the first thing I noticed that it was one color head to toe, no neckline, no hats, no belt line, no boot line, shoe line, no, none of that. And the best way I can explain it to people, the closest I can explain it, the color was um, close to a Hershey milk chocolate bar, not the wrapper, but the bar, maybe a smidge darker. Um, it, it stepped out. There was a, a few limbs but this one limb came out and up <clears throat> and it was standing close to that and my dad was five eight and i'd seen him come down that that uh beside the fence row i don't know how many times but a lot and when this thing stepped out that's the second thing or maybe i noticed this all at once uh how big it was how tall it was super athletic looking and i i don't <laughs> I'm 14. I don't know whether to run or sit still. I, I could. I just couldn't take my eyes off of it. And it. This whole ordeal only lasted. When I go back, I, I you know I've tried to time it in my head. I'm 30 seconds, 25 to 30 seconds, maybe a smidge more. I, I'm not sure, but it it turned to look at me. And and you know how we we turn our our, our chin is over our shoulders. It did turn its head, but it turned its shoulders and its waist. It turned and looked at me and wasn't concerned. <laughs> turned back, looked up the hill again and took off. Now, it's not running, but it's walking. It gets to the where the hill starts up. <clears throat> I knew by walking up that hill several times, I really hated it because it was the shortest distance to from that spot to the alfalfa field that I could go to and maybe catch deer later in the evening and go into that. I didn't have permission to hunt in that alfalfa field, but I could get around it uh, and hunt. And so there was a lot of times I went the long way just to keep from walking up that hill because of the grass. If it had been smooth cut, I mean, it would have been not as much of a problem, but I'm glad it was like that because I knew my motion of my legs, I had to throw my foot out to the side up and over while leaning forward same way with the left up and over leaning forward tripping you know you couldn't walk through the grass because it just it was intertwined 
<clears throat> you had to pick your foot up, your legs up, and that, that'll wear you out. Y'all know uh, walking on smooth surface is a whole lot easier than that because you never walk like that hardly, so your muscles are not used to it. Just, you know, I'd have to rest, you know, two, two or three times, five times, whatever. Well, when it started up, it was more like a walking horse motion. Not as exaggerated, but it was up and over, up and over, straight ahead, up and over. And the strides were, I couldn't tell you the distance, but it just wasn't normal. It, uh, it took it, it got up that hill in just a few seconds where it took me minutes. And the, the back was not, the body lean was not as much as, it, as we would have to do. Uh, the back, the, and what I mean by that, the back was a little bit straighter and it made it look like a really awkward walk, but a smooth walk. And seeing that, you know, my mind starts racing, what can it be? And, there, and, and then after a little bit, there's only one thing it can be. And back in the day, we, you know, we'd only seen the Patty film and it wasn't even stabilized. And, and it confused me because, you know, being young, if you hear about a Bigfoot, you think, oh, there's, there's like Godzilla. There's one, there's one Bigfoot, you know, and it's somewhere in California. Thank goodness. Um, but the, all of this started rushing through my head and I'm like, it, it's, it looks, it looks athletic. And it went on, it went on up and out of sight. And all of that's burned, you know, in my memory. Um, and I went, you know, my dad got home and I told him, uh, I, I was kind of nervous. I said, Daddy, I think, uh, I think I saw Bigfoot today. And he laughed. He said, oh, it was probably Buford walking. And Buford was almost 90 years old. <laughs> and Buford wasn't walking up his hill. You couldn't, we couldn't have drug him up there. there. <laughs> and so I, I, I just kind of, you know, okay. And I zipped it. And uh, a couple years later, him and my mom had an experience. He started coming to me. And I told him, I said, it was just a few inches below that limb. And he said, that you know how high that is? I'm like, yeah. Well, we didn't check it right then. But later when he started asking questions, we went up there. And that's when I found out I can reach even now. If I depend on my shoes, if I reach up and on my tiptoes, I can reach seven, six, seven, seven. And so when we went up there, I did that immediately. And I didn't know, but I said, man, that's, that's tall. And then he got the tape measure and we, we figured all that out. And I said, well, it give or take a few inches that it was between seven and seven and a half, I guess. But, you know, after that happened, um, it, it, it twisted your head a little bit because I, before that I would walk in, in the mornings, I never carried a flashlight with me. You know, uh, I would I would go in uh, an hour before daylight sometimes by myself and leave. I would stay to absolutely dark and then knew the trails. And, you know, of course, if it's a full moon, you, you really don't need a flashlight unless you're in the in the woods. But um, I did alternate how I did things after that. I didn't go as early a lot of times. Um, and I just paid attention more. And and I had some things happen before that, that after I saw what I saw, I started putting it together. Well, maybe this is what that was. And um, years later, I want to add this, years later, didn't forget about it, but, you know, I didn't have any more experiences. Uh, like I said, I was raising my kids and my son, he was in the living room here. And I didn't know anything about finding Bigfoot, any of that stuff. <clears throat> and I was cooking him, I think it was lunchtime. And he was um, watching something on his phone. And I heard what we now know is the Ohio how. And I froze. And I went back. I said, what are you listening to? He said, oh, it's this new show, blah, 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 finding Bigfoot. Matt Moneymaker supposedly recorded this in the early 90s. And I was like, play that again. Played it. And I'm, I'm just like, oh, my God. And it's, but that's supposed to be a Bigfoot? He said, yeah. I, he said, why? I said, I've got to tell you something. <laughs> I've heard that, you know, at least a half a dozen times. And I said, but the difference in what you're playing me and what I heard, I could feel that, that scream. The first time I ever heard it uh, was just mind-blowing. Uh, I've never felt a sound before uh, like that. 
from that far away, especially. And um, I, I came clean and, and told him what I had experienced. And, um, and from there, he was probably, I'm guessing, 13, maybe, 14. And so he didn't know what to think about it. You know, you always trust your family, but he didn't know what to think about it until about four years ago. <laughs> so I'll stop right there. And um, <laughs> if you have any questions or whatever. <laughs> Are you still close to the land that you <clears throat> grew up on hunting? I'm close, but I don't have access to it. Uh, we drove by uh, a few weeks ago, actually, because the first time I told this story publicly, I, I just from memory, so, you know, about 300 yards. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show him where it was at. We went by and I said, I was standing right there and it came out at that little point, that little elbow up there. And he said, dad, that's only 180 to 200 yards. I said, yeah, Peyton, you're right. It, it is. So, you know, that at that point, uh, I do, well, we used to do a lot of long distance shooting later. So yeah. once you get into that, you can get pretty good at judging yards you know, I, I, at that point, I wasn't, um, and I hadn't been by there in a long time. So well, I, I know whenever you're younger, you view stuff as bigger, right? Because yeah. I used to hunt my grandfather's river bottom field, and I thought this is a huge field. And I went back as an adult and looked at it, and I'm like, <laughs> I could shoot all the way to the end of this from <laughs> right the beginning yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, but it's, at that time, I thought, holy crap, that's a long way. Yep. And it was to you, you know? Yeah. World, as I, I've, I've said before, as we get older, the world gets smaller. Yeah. I, it does. That's no doubt. Absolutely. Um, Tell us about the rock throwing incident. Okay. That you and your son experienced. So after he introduced me to finding Bigfoot, I realized pretty quick it was uh, entertainment. You know, but there was things that I never had heard <clears throat> and what it did. It pointed me in the direction to YouTube and, uh, you know, going to see how some guys broke down different um, videos. And obviously, 98 percent of everything out there is fake anyway. But from, you know, you can just tell. But there's a lot of good stuff out there if you just got to dig. For it. But um, so I, I'd watch some things about the tree breaks and all that. And I never had noticed any of that. Um uh, we were, <clears throat> it was just a few weeks before the season. So I said, well, we need to go scout this place. And on a quick scout, you know, I'll look at the, the, the fence line to see where the, the holes are, where the cross, where they cross there, you know, the water, food, of course, what everybody does. And we go up around this pond and then up to the woods and he's got a hunt now, you know, that tells you, and y'all probably know uh it tells you all the property lines and all that mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we're like okay well we need to go back this way and we found uh we found some acorns up here we found a spring and we got a there was two ponds and i thought well, we need to check this back out back here it looks like where they would probably go and um lay down if went if it was windy or whatever a little little cover back there so we walk in we start kind of up the hill and i see a tree break I'm looking around and it's uh, about four and a half foot, five foot broke. Uh, there's absolutely nothing around it that fell on it. There's no scars on it. There were somebody might have had a piece of equipment and did it. There was absolutely no reason for this tree to be snapped like that. It wasn't rode down like a kid would do. It was in one point it was snapped and the top was still there and it was pointed in. It was pointed to the right. I walked up to that point and was looking at it, and we were kind of whispering about it. <clears throat> Peyton was facing up the hill. Now, to my right, about 15 or 20 yards, there was some thick stuff, some cedars, and, you know, and um, as I took a step up the hill sideways, my phone, we hadn't said anything, my phone, triggered siri triggered and said i don't quite understand well the first thing i do we're in the woods but we're not hunting i, I grab up I'm like what pulling it out and as i'm dealing with this i see something 
to my right, I've got my head down like this. I see something to my right move. Peyton's looking that way, and it it lands just a few feet away from us and bounces a couple of times. And it's a rock about about double fist size. Mm. It bounces a couple of times, hit another rock, you know, and I'm like, uh oh. And all this stuff that I <laughs> looked at on the internet, tree break marker. Um, I don't know what this deal with the phone was and then this rock and I'm like, what, what's our next move? I'm thinking, try, I'm panicking inside, but I know better than to run. If, you know, I don't care what it is. You don't want to trigger a response but from an animal or whatever. <clears throat> so Peyton, <laughs> he's looking to me. We, we, we lock eyes like, uh Oh, and then, I don't say anything for a little bit. And he said, are we just going to ignore it? We just had a rock thrown at us. I'm like, no, I'm trying to figure out what we should do. And we, we decided we should turn towards it back down, get as far as away as we can. Don't, don't run. We'll talk about this in the truck. And that's what we did. Um, and as we, as we discussed it, uh, we didn't feel threatened and the rock wasn't, thrown at us it was lobbed at us he said by the angle it come out behind that cedar and the way it landed if it had been thrown at us it would have down that hill it would have bounced several more times it may have hit one of us but at the, he said the angle that it, he said it was tossed and lobbed and it hit and it bounced a couple of times um that was you know we're talking about 30 uh, how many how many years ever how many years uh, it just brought it all back. And then uh, we really didn't know what to think about it. And we went hunting. We, we've been there the last four or five years. What I mean, I don't know if I could figure it up, but we go four or five times a year, six times a year. Uh, we've had, we've heard noises. We've heard, we've, I've smelt something come between us one morning before daylight. Uh, and the way we walk in, I have a spot. Uh, I carry a seat with me. It's a little uh, dry creek bed. And he walks up to his stand. And I, I, I'm i just there. I'm not really hunting. I'm just there with him. Uh, if a big buck walks up, you know, I'll, I'll take care of that. But, uh, <laughs> I, you know, we got radios. And it's just for us, you know, just to spend time together. And he, he's killed some big bucks there. But um, one morning I'm sitting there and I got the wind at my back. And we're walking in together. And I'm like, all right, you know, be careful. You know, let me know when you get up there. So as he, we're walking. I just stop, fold the chair out, sit down. He keeps walking. He He's up to his tree stand. He, he gets on the radio, gives me a little whisper. You know, I'm here. I'm in my stand. It's 30 minutes before daylight or so, I guess. And all of a sudden, I get a whiff of something. It's only like two to three seconds, but it was a mixture between um, – wet dog and uh not death but decay like if something i don't know you know death smells distinct you know and this was more like something that didn't happen and uh was rotten in a little bit and at first i thought well there's something dead behind me and then you know i'm a little slow <laughs> a few seconds later i'm like well if it was behind me i still smell it and i'm like wait a minute I think it's coming in between us. So I got on the radio and I was like, Hey, keep your head on the swivel. We just, I got, we got something coming in between us. So I talking about that, I don't know what it was. Um, but I think the fact that I just stopped walking and he continued, uh, maybe whatever it was thought we both went up. I don't know if that's true or not, but, um, we've had some strange things happen at that location. Uh, the tree breaks, there was another tree break, uh, two years later, and you know the three inch thorns, we call them bodocks, whatever. I don't know. It's a hardwood. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a picture I can send you. There's no scuffs, there's there's no thorns missing. Uh so nothing, no piece of equipment did it. It some, looks like something reached in and just snapped it down. And it's also five foot, four and a half, five foot. Um and we did find listening to everybody, uh going back to see where the rock was thrown from. Uh, year year after, uh, I said, "Look, I don't want to slip up on anything. We're not hunting. We just want to, you know, just see what's going on." And I found we found it about the same time. 
there's a clear X made out of it's two cedar trees that had been pulled up from somewhere and put in a, it was a, it's a wider area there, a trail. And there's these, this X and I'm like, what is going on? Because this is stuff you see on TV, on the internet. And, uh, but you put it all together and you're just talking about a few hundred yards in a circle where all of this happened. So, and it's next to two sources of water, plenty of food, plenty of deer, plenty of small stuff. So don't know. We haven't seen anything, but uh, we, we treat that place with respect and we haven't felt threatened yet. So we'll continue to go back and hunt. Uh, we haven't been hunting Bigfoot or anything like that um, because the property owner, if he found out that we even thought something like that was going on, he'd probably think we're crazy and tell us don't come back anymore. So, <laughs> and I understand, I understand that, you know, so I don't keep that to ourselves. <laughs> we're all crazy. Yeah. I mean, I've been <laughs> welcome to the club, right? I mean, but once I decide to start telling my story, you know, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. You know, they could, they can believe whatever they want to believe. And that, you know, just, that's fine. Yeah. Most people don't think you're clinically insane. They just look at you sideways. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're my, my little dumb butt, when I was young, after the sighting, uh, I'd be talking to somebody and <laughs> he'd be like, you ever seen Bigfoot? <laughs> <laughs> As I got older, I quit doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've done it. And I, I've heard some really, really, really good stories from that. But, uh, there's other ways to do it now, more subtle. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's a little bit easier nowadays too, because there's more of the conferences. It's been on TV. It's all over the internet, so it is a little bit easier to talk to people about it. Some may giggle and look at you funny, but it's enough in the public eye now that you could at least have a conversation about it. Right. And yeah. one of my wife's friends went to Branson, Missouri and brought me back a poster here. There's apparently there's a Bigfoot theme park in Branson, Missouri. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you can go to Walmart and buy a uh, Dr. Squatch uh, deodorant and stuff. Yeah. So you're yeah. right. It's, uh, it's out there, you know, and I have people giving me stuff now, you know, they're like, Hey, I got a sticker from Gatlinburg here. I you tell know, you, I don't, I don't know if you watch any of that. I watch fights but it's that backyard brawl stuff <coughs> where they go in the backyard and the fence, but the dude had a big foot painted on the ground <laughs> while they were fighting. I'm like, man, they're everywhere. He's everywhere. They're <laughs> everywhere. And, and my son, my son always says this, I, he's never seen one, but he's had some stuff happen. Yeah. And he's, and he'll, somebody will say, well, I, I wish I could see one. And he's like, I don't know if you do or not. People like people he's talked to, you know, uh, Mark, we say that all the time too. And yeah. Everybody's like, no, you don't. And I don't like, think. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I've actually heard. You know, I can laugh about mine because I felt comfortable, and I have I now I have felt threatened a couple times, and you'll see later uh, one time. But um, I've got some friends and people I know that it it messed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. And I think yeah. y'all know some of the same people I you know that I know. And for one to stand 30 yards away from the tree stand and scream at you and not right. let you down, I I get chills every time I, I, I hear that story. So, yep. yeah. Now, yeah. you have, you recently went back to that area with your dog. Can, can you tell us a little <laughs> bit what happened? When well, yes. So, that the hunting place I'm talking about is totally it's, it's on the opposite side of this County. It's still in the County. It's just one's on the North end, others extreme South, like right on the line. That's where we, the hunting, uh, the, our place is the one in the North end. Um, I have access to through family and it's about, you know, it's about 120 something acres, but it's, it, it butts up and joins a lot of other acreage that there's, it's kind of sparse. <clears throat> and, so when I, we had started going out, we, we've been doing it for a while and we haven't had heard anything. We had no strange sounds that we knew of, um, nothing until all of a sudden we started hearing, um, the weirdest thing was my son's good with, uh, calls. 
<clears throat> doing calls with his mouth. And one day, one one day we were there. Uh, it was late in the evening, and he did a bar bar dial, and he had the you know it's perfect. And we one answered way over here, over here, and they start coming in a little closer. And uh, I think at one point we might have had three coming in to check us out. It was getting it was getting close to dark. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> we we have this one. It's like uh, it tried to. It sounded like one, but it didn't have that trill at the end. And we looked at each other, and Peyton said, "That was big, and that was on the ground. That was no owl." I'm like, uh, I, "I think you're right, but but <laughs> that's mind blowing." It was something trying to mimic an owl, and it messed up. It wasn't perfect, and uh, we've heard that several times. And I just find, found out uh, watching some of the Alabama folks talk about experiences when when one of them made that comment that that I was like, "Wait, what?" Uh, oh my God! You know, I think it was a Kumbo, maybe, or my son. He was telling me that he said that it was uh, uh, that it wasn't finished with that trill, and maybe I went and watched. I watched so much stuff. I mean, I can't remember, but anyway, so I went out there one day, we, we, you know, I started helping Mike with his show, told my story, <clears throat> listening to people and talking to them, asking them questions. And I had this bright idea one day I was off work. <clears throat> I was going to go look for a gifting spot. And I don't know anything about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, I've heard it this can be dangerous, but uh, so I had my dog, she's a 60 pound staffing and you, on the, you put a picture of her up there. Um, she's not really scared of much, maybe fireworks, but so she usually leads me. I have her on the leash and she'll lead me places. I have to, it's hard to hold her back sometimes. And this is before, this is a couple of days before this video that you'll see in a minute. Um, <clears throat> we went in um, and all of a sudden I started hearing this noise. It was an animal that I never heard before. <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out what I'm hearing. And it's about, I'm going to say it's about 70 yards away, straight in front of me and it thick stuff. And it almost sounded like something with a throat, a large throat was trying to coax her to it. And I'm sitting there thinking this, that's nuts. That's crazy. And, I wasn't wasn't scared. I had a nine millimeter with me. I naive again, and uh, I had it on in a holster. And so it's making this noise, and she she's looking at me. She's worried, but then this this noise it, it had to be two of them because it was dry leaves that day, <clears throat> and it made the noise. And then not even a second later, it's 20 yards from me, making the, and it gets louder, a lot louder. And that's when I start getting scared because I'm like, that's either two of something that I don't know what it is, or that's something that can move <clears throat> really fast and really quiet. And it was 20 yards in front of me. I couldn't see it. There were trees, but as big as this thing sounded, I should have been able to see it. That's what scared me. If I can see a threat, I'm probably going to be scared, but not, I didn't know what the threat was. <clears throat> so she, she dropped to the ground and was hugging the ground and looked up at me. And I've never seen this look from her. It looked, it was a help, help me. And I made, I'm like, okay, should I let her, should I let her loose and let her run and whatever. And then I just made the decision if it's going to get us, it's going to get both of us. I looked at her. I said, honey, that's you know, her name's honey. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to leave you, but you got to help me. And I need you to walk. I need you to get up. I need you to walk with me. And she did get up. She was slinking, uh, you know, just uh, not crawling, but she was slinking. She and usually leads me wherever we go. She had her right shoulder against my left leg and was hugging me. And she kept looking up at me like, you know, she didn't like whatever it was. I turned my back on it. And when we turned, when we turned and walked away, it quit. And we went out to the truck and I was videoing. I had this phone. I was videoing. 
um, got back to the truck, turned the video off, or I thought I did. I actually turned it back on for a few seconds. Couldn't figure out what's going on. Got her in the truck, got in, <clears throat> called uh, Don Odom, my game warden. He's a retired game warden, my go-to guy. I said, where are you? He said, I'm at home. I said, all right, I can be there in 25, 30 minutes. I've got to show you something. I need to know what this is. And I said, it's a sound. It's an animal. It's big. He said, okay, I'll be here. So we go down to Mooresville. I pull in his driveway, go in his house, and we're watching. He said, let's watch it from the start. And when it gets within the minute of this thing starting to make this noise, if I cut my camera off, my phone camera, it's going to go dark. It's going to stop. We get to a certain point. I go to move to the left. Everything blurs, and it stops. And I'm like, I thought Don touched something. I said, did you did you pause it? No. I said, did it freeze up? Well, no. When we got to looking at it, it ended right there. And <clears throat> the feeling I had sitting on his couch was one embarrassment it was sickening that I, I what i heard was so strange and so um big and i didn't know what it was and i had the guy to either at least tell me he didn't know what it was or or, or identify it for me uh, make me feel better um i didn't have the proof and and i'm like is, and i'm thinking is this what people are going they go through with this this equipment that i've heard the malfunctions and uh, it was just the sickest feeling in the world. And I had drove all that way and I apologize. I'm sorry to bother you. I said, this is ridiculous, you know? And so this video you'll show later, I was making sure that I didn't touch that red button. Um, and because, because we had heard some things before I turned it on, because our, our idea with what we were doing, <clears throat> we we're going to do the gifting. And I had a couple apples and, and uh, two oranges. I had a hoe. We had a hoe with us. We had guns with us. Um, we were going to just take, and I thought, well, if I take <clears throat> a sapling and I put the, this fruit in this tree about head high to us, and I take this hoe and, and get all these leaves and all these sticks and everything away and get fresh dirt, then if something, and it was a pretty good circle when we got through, if something steps in to get this, then we'll get tracks. If it's a raccoon walks across, squirrel, whatever. You know, we'll, we'll know what stepped in there and got that. Um, but we heard some things. Uh, I don't think there was a tree crack. It sounded like a knock, but it was more like a thud. But then I started kind of recording. <clears throat> and that's what that's where it picks up. So we had we had some sounds happen before I actually turned it on. But I made sure I had it. And I was watching, make sure, you know, watch the counter make sure it was going because uh, I didn't want that to happen again. So I'm kind of long winded. You have to shut me up every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'd like to do is to play the actual video of when you and your son went back. How, how long ago was this that y'all went uh, back? And I'm thinking it was, um, there weren't any leaves on the trees, but it was getting close to spring. Okay. Uh, and we had been at this point here, we had been in there pretty hot and heavy for three weeks. And I think we might've, might've made something mad by being, because this place is infrequently visited. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And we had been going in and <clears throat> just, just hanging out too at times. Cause we go let the dog run or whatever. <clears throat> and um, after what happened here, uh, we backed off a little bit. You know, we, we, we're going to go tomorrow night or Saturday, maybe tomorrow night. And we're going to carry some night vision and, uh, and just sit and not do anything. Maybe try the owl calls again, but we're, we will listen for a while first. But, but yeah, this, this here, I don't think it was February. I'm, I'm guessing in March. Uh huh. Okay. It's probably. And what I would like to do <laughs> is to play the, camera footage and um i was i was really impressed at how calm you were with all of the, this <laughs> stuff going on especially having your son with you 
because well, that, that, that takes on a new meaning. Yes. Uh, and what yeah. I've got is on the right side, you'll see the video. And I have it synced up with on the left upper with the spectrogram. And you can be looking for the little yellow arrows that'll pop up, but we'll we'll look at it full screen um, after, after uh, Roger does a follow-up on this video. And the bottom left is just a waveform. And so let's let's just listen to to live action. Um, so many strange noises. Might possibly be a, a hog. We don't have hogs here, but I mean, I know there's there could be. But l looking at videos last night on YouTube, animal sounds, it was the closest thing. I could. It, but I know what a pig sounds like. I know they make different noises, but I just don't think it was a pig. I don't know what's going on with these. Looks like somebody stacked these, maybe. You see here, they've been here a while. We've, we've, there's a lot of fresh breaks today. I heard it. Oh, yeah. What is that? It's back this way. Nope. I don't think that was a coyote. Could be if it'd been a beagle hound way off from here. We do know there's nothing in this direction. Don Odom, <clears throat> a couple of days ago, we put markers on the Google Earth, and it's 1.3 miles to his in this direction. We're looking to where he heard the scream at that night. They shook his truck and ran him off when he was out setting up to spy on some uh, poachers. Shouldn't hear anything, hardly walking. It rained all night. It was sprinkling before we got here. This is the same spot. And my camera's still going. This is the same spot. Um we got I got ran out of with my dog the other uh just a couple days ago. If I drop this phone. I mean, I, just put it in your mind. We ain't here to hurt nothing, okay? And we got the guns for coyotes and stuff like that. How, how are you feeling right now, Peyton? I got a little euphoric um, feeling after I said that. I don't know. Maybe we got something to the left of us over here. 
Wow. That was, that was really interesting. Uh, Larry, what did you think about that? I thought it was cool, but I got a feeling whenever Roger gets nervous, he gets a little chatty. <laughs> what do you think? He walked up on a snake and he froze and said, man, you, you handled that pretty good. He said, I was running like hell inside, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be, yeah. Um, I think if Roger would have heard half of what was going on right. that we heard right there, he wouldn't have stayed there. Long. Right. Uh, and, the, and and just before the first question mark, you hear that huff, growl, whatever. Um, yeah. That that's when I knew it was something big, because the air the air rushing out of it sounded like two nostrils. That's when things changed for me. Um, like I, you know, he had an AR, I had a shotgun with a double long brass and I didn't, it, they didn't feel big enough. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, so like I said, we don't go out hunting to kill Bigfoot or anything. It's just, there's I always tell people they're little critters that like to bite folks, you know? And, yeah. and sometimes all you have to do is just fire one off and they'll run. <clears throat> but, but so, yeah. so go ahead and tell us the backstory on this. So we, you know, I had the, my dog I had that happen. Uh, it was dry leaves that day. A couple of days later, it had sprinkled a little bit. And you know, the, the floor get damp and the leaves will get damp and you can pretty walk pretty quietly. And when we walked in, you know, we're, we had a bag with the, that fruit. When we walked in, where my dog and I were at a couple of days prior, there were trees half dead trees and you know, whatever they were pushed down across. It, it's a, the trail is wide enough to drive a truck through where you can go back to the pond. It's not that long. <clears throat> and when I walked in, we we're having to step over these, these, these trees. And I'm looking around. I'm like, Dude, well, did it storm last night? And it was just a drizzling rain. He said, no, I don't think so. And I'm looking, I said, these, these, I don't know, six or seven of them, maybe. I said, they weren't here two days ago. And they, you know, if a wind comes through and lays something over, they're all laid one way. Well, these are just across everywhere. And I'm like, um, huh, this is strange. And he said, well, then we got to looking. Well, this one come from there. This one fell here. This one was pushed that way. And this is the middle of it. It fell back this way. And I'm like, that's, that's not right. I mean, we were just, we, we were on alert. <clears throat> and we walked in, like I said, we heard a, it's like a tree snap, a, a, a green sapling just, you know, and I'm like, uh oh. So, well, anyway, uh, a few things happened. I started, I started recording and, you know, you can hear, I mean, I know you've cut some stuff out because he's, he did me a favor, y'all in the audience. Uh, I, I said some horrible words and I'm embarrassed about it. And I thank you for cutting that out uh, because it was, I didn't even know I did it. Uh, you talking about that being chatty? I, yeah. I said some stuff. I, <laughs> oh, it, was hey, it happens to Mark all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had this start happening and, and, and we're, we're on alert. Uh, I don't, I don't recall. I was watching it then. I was watching the sound, but you know, we hear that, that uh, that call or whatever it was and then a little bit while later um i believe i don't know if i, I got those buzzards flushed to the right and we were we we're like you know something something's over there or they see something coming uh we wasn't thinking i don't know what we were thinking i i, I really don't know what we we're thinking the whole time until we heard the huff growl and the the, the boulder toss and all that and then you know i got scared but uh when we walked in, we got past those trees and we started in the woods line and we flushed five deer, all those, some young deer. They took off running. You know, you know how they do when you when you spook them. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's dry leaves, it just sounds like they're tearing the woods down. Well, we didn't hear them. They're 15 yards, 20 yards. They're scattered. They all run to the left and they can, you know, they can go around and get us some thick stuff back behind us if they want to. We didn't hear them 
They, they didn't make that much noise. But whatever that was walking, and we could hear it uh, just out of sight there, that's what you may you hear me make the comment. I'm like, that has to be big because we didn't, those deer ran and we didn't really hear them. So it was confusing. Uh, when we, we, we got out of there, we got to the truck, we plugged the phone in immediately over the speakers and we turned it up and, and we didn't, we didn't hear everything we just heard, but the how gruff was a little, it seemed like it was a little louder, but I was like, we got it. We got it. You know, I was, I was just excited. And I said, what do you think about what just happened? He said, I don't know, but I ain't going back there again. (laughs) I'm not going in that spot again. And I'm going to tell you uh, about three, four miles away. I didn't break down like a baby, but every, like you said, my son was with me. And then I was like, uh Oh, you know, we're, we're in a spot here or we're in bad spot boys, <laughs> but like on, uh, oh, oh brother, where art thou? But, uh, I was, I felt like we're in a bad spot and, um, it scared me. And I think it all hit me about four miles away. It was a relief, but I got a little bit emotional because, uh, he was, he was with me, felt threatened. Uh, he had, I had to try to stay calm. My daddy always told me, uh, in the store business on the interstate, you have people come in, try to, uh, uh, quick change you all this stuff always act like you know what you're doing even if you don't so that kind of was um something i've always tried to do so i can figure out you know a solution or what's going on so that's really what i was doing i was panicking inside i mean i really was and i do get a little chatty um <laughs> um but i it all came out just down the road and I, I did tear up a little bit because it was like, uh, we're safe now. Uh, what did I get us into? You know, and we haven't done that again, <laughs> but we have gone back at night and built the fire and, and we keep going back. I mean, and we don't, I don't want it, anything to run us off, scare us or anything like that, but there's obviously something out there. Uh, we've had something happen. I don't even know how much time. I mean, there was one time we had my son. I was in the driver's seat. My wife's on the right side. My son's girlfriend's behind me. And he's on the right side of the truck. And on that side of the truck is where that area is. And it was probably 10 o'clock at night. We're quiet. And there's there's rocks that stick two or three foot out of the ground. Just huge boulders. Just uh, it's, it's a river area. And me and Kenzie, I heard it. It sounded like two feet stepped off of one of those big rocks and boom, boom. And it sounded like as big as a cow. That's exactly what I thought. And I turned to Kenzie and I said, did you hear that? She said, actually I did. I said, how big did it sound? She said, it sounded like as big as a cow, but it was two feet. I'm like, yes. Cause she just confirmed what I heard. I said, I heard the same thing. That was only 20, 25 yards away from the side of the truck over there. So we've had a lot of, a lot of stuff happen. Um, and I don't want to push it. That was kind of the, the point where I was like, we might need to rethink what we're doing here because I want to be safe. I, I would like to know what it is. Well, I would, I would Peyton said he really don't want to know. He <laughs> says that about all this stuff. He, when, when Mark, I told him Mark was going over the sound, he said, I hope he finds it. It's out something just normal. So I don't have to worry about this. No, <laughs> <laughs> I called him and told him, you sent it to me. I'm like, Oh, uh, guess what? He said, no. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My son's that way. It's a lot easier to go to the deer stand. If you ain't got that on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. you have gotten some phone calls, had you Larry? I have. And, and he, he'll tell me, I don't believe it. But then he'll call me out, Dad. I hear wood knocks. Yep. <laughs> I hear this. I'm like, don't I, worry about it. Just keep hunting. Just come yep. down early enough to get to the truck. <laughs> yep. I mean, have, has he ever felt threatened at no, all? No. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. That's the only time um, that that we had. Well, one of the only times. I, even when the rock was thrown, it wasn't really. Uh, I found out when we went back, <clears throat> if we'd have walked to that thicket 
and stepped out the other side, those woods opened up so real pretty and a, a, and a bowl saddle type, the ridge. And, and I, I said, you know what? We, what, what we did probably was walked in on it. It wasn't expecting us. And it was like saying, Hey, don't, don't come any further because if we'd have went through there, it, we'd have seen it because it couldn't have got away. I mean, I know they're supposedly fast. Yeah. But it yeah. was just such a big woods back there that uh, uh, the only thing between us and it was that little thicket there, you know? So I think we pushed it into doing it, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> but I, him, I said, to throw a rock, you got to have a thong. Yeah. So that rules out a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, I've, I kind of clipped these uh, vocalizations and I'm not, positive that if it was a tree that crashed but it was something that crashed yeah and uh so i'm just going to go ahead and pull this up as soon as i find it it was loud and uh if you're not able to hear it real well then you could go back and listen to it with headphones later on but we'll go ahead and play it now I just don't think it was a pig. I don't know what's going on with these. Looks like somebody stacked these, maybe. You see, they've been here a while. We've, we've, there's a lot of fresh breaks today. I heard it. Oh, yeah. What is that? It's back this guy. Hold on. something very big dropped a boulder. we had a tree knock and then it sounded like something dropped a boulder whatever it was i hear it walking and it's we shouldn't hear anything hardly walking it rained all night it was sprinkling before we got here this is the same spot and my camera's still going this is the same spot um Can I, can I point out something? Sure. Just just before that first question mark, if you go eighth of an inch before that with that huff growl, uh huh, that was so loud. That's what scared scared me. And then when that huff growl happened, it was it was so large. Then when that you said it sounded like a tree, it was a tree. It would sound like a sapling snap, and it it it's like a, a gun went off. The echoes coming through towards us. Uh, that's that's what we heard. But just about an eighth of an inch before that first question mark, if y'all listen, it's a, and it's, it's just so deep and such a volume of air that that's, it's, a, it's crazy. But it's, <laughs> it's I, I'm just, I'm just wondering how, how you processed all of this, you know, a week down the road, a month down the road, thinking back on it now, how, how do you process this? Um, I called Peyton. I left him alone and I, and I, and I'm, and I'm thinking I'm going over and over and over and thinking, why are we doing this? Um, and, and what happened? And I called him. I said, what, what you know, a week into it, what, what are you, what are you thinking? What? Because I, I wanted to talk to him about it. Because you're right, processing this is tough. Because um, you have a, you have an incident like that. It's almost like an almost accident, you know. Uh, it's a, it's it's almost um, it's not traumatic. It, you know, because there's a lot of traumatic stuff that actually happens, but it's 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 close. So I called him one day, and I'm like, "What are you?" Um, <laughs> Spence. So what do you, um, what do you think about this? And he, he's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. He said, I, I, you know, I've heard the stories and I, I, I believe, I believe, and I've had 
things happen with me and you there. He said, but that was so crazy. Like I said, it, it was went on for a few minutes before we started actually recording. And, um, and, and one thing you don't hear right there when I say, how are you feeling right now? He said, cause I had said, you know, we're not here to hurt you. We're just here. You know, we're curious, blah, blah, blah. We don't get hurt either. And he's, he's, I said, how do you feel right now? And he said, the whole feel of the woods just changed. And then we, that, and then you had that crack that you're showing that, that tr uh -huh. tree just was just snapped, you know? And, but the, pro I, I can't tell you what the process is. Cause I still, when, when you sent me that today, I was sitting on the bed listening to it. And then we talked and I was just stunned because when we left there and we heard what, you know, what we could hear, I didn't think we'd ever hear that again. I didn't know anybody right. found equipment or whatever, but we heard it. We knew we had the experience and it was almost like a high five. Oh crap type thing. You know, <laughs> like we we're right. excited uh. and you're like, Oh Lord. And, uh, but we, I didn't think we'd hear it again. And I appreciate you doing that because, and, and, and Larry picked up on it. There was two of them. We didn't hear cause I was talking <laughs> and I did not hear it. And, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, it, I'm still going, I'm still processing it. And this helps. This well, helps kind of it, it. It's and like you said, you people that know they're really not trying to convince because you got people ask questions. If I try, if I have to try to convince you, I can't. No, if, you know, yeah. if you're not asking the right questions and you're not listening to my answers. Then there's no, you know, you can't do it. But this right here was confirmation. It's confirmation that we we actually went through what we went through, uh, yeah. and. I still don't know what it is. I still don't know what it was, but I know what it felt like it was. And I know it was big because yeah. you put all the pieces together. It's just like uh, I told somebody before with the rock thorn, you got the, the broken tree by itself. Eh, no big deal. Siri triggering by herself. No big deal. Rock thrown at you. Eh, get all those three put together in about five to 10 seconds. That's, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, um, and I guess it's like, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh so anyway um that's a good question and, I, and i'm sorry i don't have a better answer because i'm still doing it still none of us have a good answer for that it's the just the only answer is when you're processing it you're used to your reality being a straight plane that you do every day nothing's out of the ordinary and then all of a sudden you have an encounter and your reality is warped because there's all of a sudden this big hairy giant in the world that you didn't think was in the world yeah and so your reality is gone and that's that's uh that's some of those things back when you're a kid you know you're like oh godzilla daddy where's godzilla from japan oh is that a long ways yeah you're okay i'm good <laughs> well you see something in virtually your backyard yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's you know yeah. that's different where you felt safe and where you felt like you knew every inch of it and yep knew all the animals that were in it. Yeah. And, and I had, uh, you know, I had things happen before the sighting. Um, there was one time when I was about 11, I didn't know what it was. I freaked out. Uh, I had, a I started hunting uh deer with a 20 gauge single shot breakdown, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so my dad built a tree stand where he'd seen a big buck and he didn't, he wasn't hunting too far away. But I was fine. I climb up in there. I was, you know, I was, he man. I had me a gun. I was hunting, and and one day, um, I just got this uneasy feeling. Something was watching me, and I mean, when I say uneasy feeling, I don't mean like, oh, what's that? I mean, just panic. And I started screaming for my dad, like, get, hey, get over here. And, you know, and I was yeah. crying just about, you know. And he come, what's wrong? And I couldn't explain it. And we we left. Uh, so that was only. That was only 100, 120 yards from the site. No, 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 back up. About 150 yards, 80 yards <clears throat> from the actual sighting uh, years later. And then one day, uh, I've told this before, but, uh, you know, we had forecasts of snow, which is rare here in southern middle Tennessee. And it was going, it fell on a Saturday morning, deer season. And I'm like, oh, man, this, yes, I, I, you know, I've only got to do this one more time before. And I got up, got dressed, ate breakfast, and hit the door, had all my stuff with me. 
went my usual route. Instead of going to that backfield, I was going to my tree stand and uh, walked out in this field. If I continue, if I turned to my left and walked straight across, white, big snowflakes, it's quiet. You know, it dampens the sound. It's just so quiet. And uh, I'm looking around, make sure there's you know, there's nothing out in the field or in the edge of the woods or up the, um, it wasn't a logging road. It was a, a guy had it for his tractor that he could go through. It was pretty smooth. Um, but it went through the woods in two different places. And I'm like, well, if I walk across this field, like I usually do, as white as this is, it, it's the deer are going to see me if they're over there. So I'm trying to figure out what well, I need to go this way. I'm planning it. And I look into the woods and it's there. I look, I focus in on a spot in the woods and it's dark. And this feeling came over me. Uh, I locked down and it just, it, it just had something had me locked down. I couldn't, I, 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 it's hard to explain. I got this uneasy feeling in my gut. Um, little bit jittery and I couldn't couldn't move and I'm like you know this is crazy so I'm gonna I'm gonna take take a step with my right foot I couldn't get it off the ground <clears throat> um then started panicking a little bit um but what what is this and I and I had a feeling I looked right back at that spot and I had a feeling it wasn't a voice I had a feeling that if I went in those woods I wasn't coming out I wasn't coming back out and so after trying to take a step three or four times, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what made me do it, but in my head, I was like, if you'll let me go, I'll take a step back around with my right foot. I'll leave and I won't come back today. And I was, I was released. Whatever that means, I was released. Everything, just the weight was off of me. The jitterness was gone. And you better believe I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And I hightailed it back to the house, went in the door. Uh, there, My mom and dad's in there, still in the kitchen. And I hadn't been gone long. What are you doing? You were so excited, blah, blah, blah. And I, I lied. I said, oh, it's cold out there. I ain't going out there. Went in, uh, took everything off and stayed in for the day, did whatever. But uh, I didn't know what that was. That's, that was nuts. So that was before the sighting. Years later, when you find out um, – all these things that are maybe possible with infrasound and you know you find out that lions can actually do it other animals can do it and and lock down their prey and um you know i've seen uh scientists on tv actually uh get involved with a study where they actually turn the infrasound on or they're in the area with a line and they're uh measuring the infrasound and they ask them how he feels and they feel jittery well this is years and years after all that but it helps you make sense of what it might have been. So um, I don't know. It's just uh, and and things come back. You know, I didn't remember the tree stand freak out incident for a long time. And then somebody was talking on one of the shows one day and I'm like, wait a minute, I, this happened to me. And and I don't know what stuff I don't remember. Um, you know, I don't know if I heard uh, tree knocks. Or whatever but you know you would hear things and i'm not gonna go back and say yeah definitely i heard three trees I, I don't know but there was things you would hear and it, it being a young hunter and learning and whatever you just assumed it was this or that or whatever and you know people up in the pacific northwest had um the luxury of having uh people locally having sightings and researchers and all that from an early age from the 60s i guess or more or even before here what we had was uh you know an article in the newspaper from 1977 talking about a half dog half man that was taking so much country hounds and everybody reading it laughing you know uh, yeah it wasn't taken serious I, I remember an incident like that Guy walked up on. He called it a some kind of dog devil or something stealing his hand. <laughs> you know, you know, what Mark calls them. Uh, <laughs> tell them, Mark. Man dogs. Man dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the description he gave, uh, it that you know, and I didn't know what a. Uh, now here until a few months ago, what a um, what do you call it, uh, the dog man or whatever. I yeah. didn't know anything about that. I still don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just I mean, I've heard I, all about it I don't I've, want to 
I was I, supposed to get eaten and crapped out at LVL about 150 uh, times, mom. <laughs> 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 we, uh, we, got <laughs> we got time for a couple of questions. Uh, if you have a question, uh, just put it in all caps and we'll, uh, we'll pull it up and we'll ask Roger. Oh, so I'm just going to start with, with a question. Okay. Have you ever seen an orb in the oh, yeah. woods? I, and now you're going to make me look crazy. No, no, come, I won't. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking with you. <laughs> I actually have. Um, so there's a legend around here, Chapel Hill light. Y'all can look it up. Um, I've seen videos of it. All the, I'm going to tell you right now, all the YouTube videos are BS uh, because uh, me and two other friends actually saw it when I was about 17. We went a couple times, but the thing was, I was lucky enough that seen, I'd seen ball lightning the year before. So this it was about the size of a beach ball, and it moved like something magnetic was um, manipulating it. It came up to the tracks, and you know, but but. I wouldn't call it an orb for a while because it wasn't round, but my wife and I at the same location, you just played the video from, but on the opposite where we would be behind us across the field. We were there one night, three weeks, a month before this video, we were sitting there and, and just chilling out. And this was one of the first things that happened. Uh, I had heard a woman laughing a couple of times, two different times nobody's around um and we were sitting there one night and it was kind of a a weird evil type laugh uh but uh we were sitting there and on my wife's side of the truck we were probably 15 yards from the woods line maybe 20 it's not that far across there and she said what's in that tree and i, I lean over and look and the, some kind of light and it's, it's it's it doesn't stay uniform the same size the whole time it's just slowly been changing just a little and so i back up look up in there get a better look pull up pull up further back up uh, several times it stays there she's in another room 15 20 minutes 20 probably 20 minutes a long time and <clears throat> i said how how high up in the tree do you think that is? She said, I don't know. I said, how high is a basketball goal? You know how high that is? She said, yeah. I said, that's about 10 foot. I said, is that about the same distance? She said, yeah, it is. So this thing was about 10 foot up in this tree and uh, fluctuated a little bit. It wasn't an LED bright. It wasn't electric white. It wasn't cell phone light. It wasn't, uh, it was kind of a dull um, yellowish a little tinged white and uh it when it went away it just faded it just faded out and and went away and we sat there i mean it didn't really scare us because i mean it, it, it it's right there beside us so um i went back the next day i had to I, we got we got to go back down there and i went in walked around behind those trees uh looked uh, for any kind of disturbance on the on the, in the leaves any place, any kind of device that might have been hung up in that tree or anywhere, there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. No reason for it. So, now I do understand that there are some bioluminescent um, fungi or fungus mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, it wasn't that, but uh, I, I think those are like different colors. But you you look at all the possibilities, you know, you start saying, okay, what could, what could this be? So, I didn't know about the, the bioluminescent until then. So I'm learning as we see stuff and whatever, I try to research it and really rule out things first. And then I, I'm to a point now, I don't, I don't know what it was. I can't tell you. Hmm. All right. We got a question. Uh, I don't know nothing about this. I do. I know. Do you? No, I don't. Oh man. Uh, Dwayne yeah. Ayers asks, does he know anything about the hitchhiker effect? Well, I was filled in about that. Um, uh, Last year, year and a half ago, me and my wife was out in uh, Colorado. We figured out we were close to Skinwalker Ranch, and we decided to pull up to the front gate. <laughs> and then I got to, I'm like, I won't get out of here before uh, 
you know, something jumps on us or whatever. <laughs> but we filmed it all the way up and, uh, and it was kind of a fun thing to go to, but then people are like, like he just brought up, you heard about the uh, hitchhiker? And I'm like, I don't want to know about this, but yeah, I have, I have heard about it recently. So, um, now I don't know. Can you explain it? <clears throat> Can I explain it? Yeah. The hitchhiker effect. Yeah. Where something, uh, where something attaches to you and then follows you around, comes home with you and all that. Oh, that ain't real. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Larry's world. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay, we got another question okay. uh, from Can Squatch. Okay. Uh, in the video, how close were the vocals close. to y'all? Close. We we guesstimated uh, where we could see. Uh, just beyond that, we were guesstimating fifty to sixty yards. No more. No more than sixty. I mean, this. Uh, what was what we talked about too was, I mean, if whatever it was had come another five to ten yards, it would have been exposed. And any and we 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 looked because I don't know if it was in that video. I said I was pointing out this thirty right there, forty five. Yes, right there, it, you know, and you know, and so in an arc, uh, I was pointing out how far the we could actually see. So it was close, <clears throat> um, and it was loud. Now the, this, I know y'all know better than I do, but uh, the this equipment doesn't do it justice how loud some of this was. Oh no, yeah, it don't. yeah. I, I'm I'm really impressed it actually picked up some of the stuff it did. Um, but uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a phone's not quite as good at picking it up as a recorder is. Yeah. And recorders yeah. don't do it justice. And I'm yeah. probably gonna invest in something like that just to Man, just, for fifty nine ninety nine, I can hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Roger, it's really been great having you, Thank you on the show tonight and uh, meeting you. And um, I know that you were on Spencer's show and Misty's. So I'm going to go back and watch it because I like hearing these encounter stories for the first time. Yeah. You know, live on the air. It just, I don't know. I just, it just pulls me in. I'm, and, I'm sorry. but, uh, We'd like to get uh give you this opportunity to uh, tell how anybody in the audience can contact you. Um, yeah. I, so my my email I set aside for you know for people to contact me about either some of their um, experiences or whatever. It's squatch and holler at gmail dot com. It's without the G, not squatching squatching holler um and yeah i'm i'd be glad I'm, I'm always up for hearing uh uh hearing stories i've had a few people that were going to reach out to me and i think they kind of chickened out a little bit because there's some uh close to me they, they got me email and they didn't they didn't follow through or maybe they will but uh yeah you can do that or you can um if let's you see. can also go to your youtube channel my YouTube channel. I'm yeah. I'm see. I'm not. Uh, I'm not used. To, and I, and those videos are on there. Um, I guess it. What is it? Squatch and holler on YouTube. Uh, yes. Listed because yeah. I'm not. Yes. Used to, and I've got a few videos on there, and I, yeah, I have it so I can post things. But most of it's fun stuff. Fun. You know, it, it's more. There's more than just this Bigfoot stuff. But um, I and and some of you that's never. Uh, met me or talked to me, even though I laugh and cut up, I, I take this seriously. But if you talk about dealing with things, <laughs> if you, if you sit and think about some of the stuff that's happened, um, it's, it can get to you. And, and there, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, Peyton, I said, some of the things that's happened to us just recently. And, you know, in the last three or four years, uh, we, we kind of, talk about it amongst ourselves and i said i've been telling my story and i think we get a little um not jaded to it but i said you think about the emotion yeah when we first this stuff happened he said i know he, and he's funny he's not as scared of anything but he's like i don't like thinking about it 
you know, because he's – I think if he saw one, it would be like, okay, I'm done. Don't care nothing about it no more. I saw one. It's real. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he is. Yeah. So, yeah, just, you know, if you want to go to my YouTube page, um, there's there's a few other th- – there's, there's one video that we actually do the – I call it walkabout on that one property where we had the rock thrown and where we actually go up behind there. And I, I have to learn, um, if I do any more of these, I won't be narrating it. It's, like, <laughs> 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 it's talk- difficult. It really yeah. is difficult. Uh. Whenever you're getting excited or getting nervous or yep. it's a natural thing. I have to tell Mark, all right. Just calm down. <laughs> we ain't gonna hear none of this. <laughs> now no, everybody reacts differently. Uh, I get quiet and act like I'm not scared and all that, and I usually ain't till the next day. Whenever I think about what I was doing, and I'm yes. like, what am I thinking? Somebody asked me that. They're like, why, why do you? Aren't you scared? I'm like, you know. While I'm in the woods, I've been in the woods all my life. I'm not that scared. When I go to bed at night, Lanner, thinking what we just did, right? I, I then I get terrified. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What do you keep doing this for? Yeah. You know, somebody said, though, well, what's your goal? I said, I don't know, not to get torn to shreds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll all, work. <laughs> it ain't right. no fun after that. No. <laughs> no, it ain't. <laughs> but yes, I appreciate you guys. I and and Mark, I like I said, I didn't think we'd ever hear some of this stuff again. And I heard stuff that I didn't really hear the first time. So I, I appreciate it. Um I because you know, it, you just don't I just don't know that many people, technical people. And I don't remember who said it on one of the shows that you that you did this. And I forgot because I, I didn't know I didn't know your name. I had seen you with uh, 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 Spencer and all those guys, but uh, and I watched other videos too. Uh-huh. Spencer keeps bugging me. Quit texting me. He'll text me and then I'll, he'll say, "Quit putting your hand in front of." The- <laughs> He's been drinking, <laughs> and like smoking him. a cigar. Or something. Yeah, he, you yeah, can't Spencer, tell he's, about him. he's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> don't don't tell him though. His head will swell up. Yeah. yeah. It's yep. terrible. Yeah, it's 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 hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Whether you watched us live, um, if you were in the chat, we appreciate each and every one of y'all. And for those that are watching us at a later time, and uh, it's I just love these kind of podcasts for our our we get to hear a firsthand encounter and it's, we, we want to thank you again for coming on Roger. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. It's, it's therapeutic actually. It is. So it's part of that coping process you're talking about. Right. Um, and, and, and if I can, if I say one or two words that helps somebody else put a puzzle piece together with what they're doing, you know, it may be, maybe not, but uh, we, we need to, we need to share yeah, yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. We will see everybody in two weeks. So night, night footers. Good night. Thank y'all. like to support beast tv check out our gear we have coffee mugs face masks gators shirts and tank tops the link is pinned at the top of the comment section everything is always marked down 20 percent so come check out our junk
This has been a Sawdust Production.